Hello and welcome to this presentation. This presentation is how the UK's Ministry of Defence are using Semantic Media Wiki. Unfortunately, I can't be with you today. I'm currently in hospital, uh, hospital appointment. So I'm doing this pre-recorded. This has been recorded a week before the actual presentation. But if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me by email or I'll be in the next two sessions on Wednesday and Thursday. So please ask me there as well. So how did it all begin? The Defence Wiki Platform. In 2016, the Defence Information Strategy was published. This stated that Defence should regard information as a strategic asset where its value is often increased through sharing. So that was the main core of why we started using MediaWiki and Semantic MediaWiki in Defence. Going down to the second paragraph, this stated that information is most powerful when it is available and visible to the right person and making sure that it gets to the right place. This led to a web-based application with a search facility that works. The direction we had at the time was to deliver policy in a non-standard, non-linear format. The Defence Information Strategy has been updated several times since 2016. It has since been withdrawn, but this direction hasn't changed. This is what the new Defence and Information Technology Strategy says. As can be seen, it is still promoting digitising the battle space and promotion of having the right information available at the right time, whether that's on the front line or in the office supporting the front line. Prior to these publications being released, it had been discussed about converting a PDF-heavy document into a wiki. A meeting was held with the digital transformation team who had also been having similar thoughts about better ways of publishing policy in the organisation using MediaWiki. In 2017, along with my colleagues, squadron leader Ben Fletcher and Billy Cofield, I started to develop a proof of concept on publishing a joint service publication, or JSP 604, the Defence Manual for ICT. This is a policy about how to bring IT into the MOD and how it is managed through life until termination or disposal. This is Ben presenting at Houston, Texas at the Enterprise Media Wiki Conference in 2018. Ben wrote with NATO to see how they were using Media Wiki and more importantly, how we could utilize Semantic Media Wiki within the MOD. Semantic Media Wiki is very powerful from an administration perspective where we could find out information about when pages need to be reviewed, who owns the pages, plus gaining other information, for example, when to engage with a page during the Open Group Architecture Framework Architecture Development Method or a project lifecycle. We are also able to list the documents that are related to each page. These could be internal MOD documents, government standards or international standards. The PDF version of JSP604 contained 84 separate documents comprising of 1,828 pages. When the previous version of the policy was published, it was due to have an extra 19 PDF documents, which never made it. These covered a variety of subjects. These PDF documents were linked to from a web page that, if printed, would take 20 pages. 16 documents have been migrated to the wiki so far. 68 documents are in the process of being migrated from PDF to a wiki format. The 19 documents that never made it to PDF, that's still to be decided. The conversion process is still very much work in progress. I can assist in the publication, but I can't verify the contents are correct. This is currently being discussed and the appropriate subject matter experts are due to be tasked. So what's happened since? Two policies have been published, the Defence Manual for ICT and the Information Management in Defence. Two further policies are currently in development. These are for the user acceptance policy for when using the MOD's ICT infrastructure and a policy about how to make claims for serving personnel. This is the Defence Digital Architecture Wiki. This wiki allows architects to publish guidance on how the MOD do architecture. This currently has architecture models. We have done this using an insight report and embedding the HTML in an iframe. We are looking at importing Biz Design into Mermaid to provide this function. The frontline commands have been using MediaWiki for information management and guidance. We currently have 18 wikis being worked on. These include... The frontline commands have several wikis between them. These include Empowerment, Doctrine, Training, Operational, 
and historical information. Rick is for certain parts of the units in the armed forces. The MOD Welsh Language Scheme. This wiki will cover information about the Welsh Language Scheme in both Welsh and English. We have a number of wikis looking at strategic analysts and security information. These are being developed across defence. The final wiki in development is for serving personnel and how to use the internal human resource system. So what are the benefits of us using MediaWiki and Semantic MediaWiki? By using page forms we can ensure that all pages look the same and have the same consistency. One of the issues that we had with JSP604 when in PDF format was that it was very difficult for us to see when documents were last updated, hence we couldn't task people to do the work. With Semantic Media Wiki, this is automatically created. A query has been written that lists which pages are coming up for review. This can then be passed on to staff for review. In the past, questions have come in asking what is required at each project lifecycle. I'm looking at JSP604 in particular here, the Defence Manual for ICT. Using page forms, I've included input boxes asking when pages are relevant to the project lifecycle and which international and British standards they are referred to. A query has been written that will give the projects this information in a table. When we first started using MediaWiki, there was just one wiki. That was JSP604, the Defence Manual for ICT. We have three other wikis now that have been published, with a further 18 in development, ranging from Ministry of Defence Policy to Frontline Command Doctrine, Information Management and the History of the Royal Signals. Although the vast majority of the experience that I've had with MediaWiki has been positive, there have been some negatives as well. And there's been a number of issues that have been reported over the four years that we have been using MediaWiki in the MOD. One of the biggest issues that has been reported when using MediaWiki is that it's not very intuitive. It can take a long time to understand how it works. We make use of forms a lot to ensure that the content is uniform across the wiki, but unless you use it on a daily basis, it can be quite daunting. Using page forms and the WYSIWYG editor, we have tried to make it as simple as possible, but people still find it confusing. One user even made a comment that it doesn't work in the same way as Word. With some of the wikis, we utilise the extension Lockdown to enable staff to write draft pages before publishing. This makes it so only people who need to view can do, saving confusion on the off chance someone finds some draft policy and takes it as the current policy. The pages that are in the draft namespace are protected by the lockdown extension. So if someone sends you a link to a draft page and you are not logged in, you are prompted to log in. Just as it should be. But when you log in and you are redirected, you are sent to a bad title. Not sure if this is a lockdown issue or media wiki. So the only way to actually get into it is to go back into the link which was sent initially once you've logged in. So the future. There is currently a project ongoing to upgrade MediaWiki 1.31 to MediaWiki 1.35. This project is also looking at the following tasks. The server that is currently being used is a little antiquated. We are using Windows Server 2012 using WAMP. We are looking at moving to Red Hat and using LAMP. When new wikis come on board, we are looking at a different onboarding process and a service rub, which we just don't have at the moment. During the onboarding process, certain criteria and tasks will need to be completed by the wiki owners to comply with, ironically, JSP604, the Defence Manual for ICT. There is a requirement to have embedded architecture models and other ways of displaying data. The project is looking at using Mermaid to perform these actions. The MOD is a government department. We are required to keep copies of the content for a period of time. At the moment, archiving is done manually using HDTrack. For JSP604, this typically takes three days to run the command. These copies can then be sent to allies, other government departments or industry partners. Some of the content that is generated on the platform are contracted against. Hence, for contractual reasons, a project will need to know what the content said at a certain date. The aim at the moment is to use Heratrix, which is used by the Rayback machine on the Internet Archive, but the project is also looking at the possibility of clicking on a button and the entire site can be downloaded in HTML. As with any website, we need to have a user agreement process. At the moment, we're doing that using forms on Microsoft SharePoint, so ideally we want to move away from that so it's all done on the one server. 
Finally, we have 24 wikis. Each one has its own login. Most users will have one login for one wiki, but others have several accounts covering several wikis. The aim is to allow a single sign-on, similar to how the Wikimedia Foundation work. This next sentence is said without prejudice or commitment. If any of you can offer any tips or tricks on single sign-on or password, it would be very much appreciated. The aspiration is to move the capability to a more suitable team. It is currently managed in the Defence Digital Digital Enable team in the architecture function. This is more to do with finding better ways of working and being more innovative, making data and information being better accessed in the defence community. One of the pieces that we do do is with the configuration management. We don't want to put the wikis at risk. We only use mature extensions, ideally ones that are part of the media wiki release. Generally, if there are certain people involved in the development of the extension and is named as a developer, then that can take precedence over other extensions. So thank you very much for your time this afternoon. If you need to contact me, please do not hesitate to contact me by email. My email address is on the screen, gary.foster443 at mod.gov.uk. Alternatively, I will be in the conference for the next two days, so you can catch me up on Hopin as well. Thank you very much for your time, and I shall speak to you soon.